a dear old friend who passed away in 2021, kept saying to me, how can you say you are educated and free if you don't know where your food comes from, if you're not producing your own food? The freedom to feed yourself, to be in control of your plate, to be in charge of your plate. When there's a crisis, you know you have food to eat, your family is fine because you have food to eat. There's no greater freedom than that. This thing just kept eating at me until, yeah, one moment I said, you know, I need to, I need to go home, you know, I need to go back home. Right now, there is a war being waged against African farmers. Powerful multinational companies that run the global seed industry are trying to take away farmers' seed sovereignty. Africa is touted as the last frontier in the global economy for its natural resources and untapped markets. And this has brought new actors into African agriculture. Some of them include philanthropic organizations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. International investors are being invited to exploit these resources in the name of development. But really, it's just opening doors to multinational companies for them to find new markets for their products, to be able to take Africa's resources and also to change our laws in the interest of business. The seed is the very beginning of the agricultural value chain. Without seed, how can you produce anything? But if they control the seed, they control what crops will be planted, under what circumstances. If we lose the right to seed, then we lose the right to our food sovereignty, and then we lose everything. And I don't even think that people out there realize just what control these companies have over policy making. They write the laws. Our governments just rubber stamp GM applications. How these people were curing themselves, how these people were feeding themselves before even uh, the Europeans come over. We were not dying of hunger, but today we can die of hunger. Farmers in the villages were living great, choosing their own seed, choosing what to grow, when to grow and how to grow it. They were making their own compost and uh, we're losing all that uh, because of uh, just big, big industries uh, coming over, running over us. And uh, this needs to stop. What's gonna happen if we lose all this? Uh, we're just gonna be depending on somebody else or someone else or another country. Uh, I can show you some of the seeds uh, we get from, uh, from European countries. Some of them even are not adaptable to uh, our soils here. We lose even some of our foods, the indigenous foods, and um, turning ourselves to uh, many products from overseas. Considering the demography of uh, Senegal, and uh, I think we're gonna be running big, tr big time, big troubles in the near future, because we do not control basically uh, the seeds we need to, to grow, to provide food for the country. The argument they use is that Africa has a burgeoning population. So every single piece of material you read, they talk about how many Africans there are. And we have to feed all these hungry people. But they don't talk about the fact that 90% of the seed used in Africa is in the hands of small-scale farmers. And 70% of the food consumed on the continent comes from the fields of small-scale farmers. And the commercial farming sector mainly produce maize and soya beans to ship around the world to feed the animal feed industry. The narrative that, that we're, we're, we're becoming this astronomical number of people competing for a shrinking food source is actually an industry narrative. It came from certain circles um, who were in the business of making money with selling food, you know, from a certain from a certain way of producing food. So, no, I don't think we're gonna be running out of food, but we will run out of soil, we will run out of water, we will run out of the things it takes, you know, the components you need in order to produce food. 
the, the message, I mean, of course, globally and also on the African continent, is that we need to industrialize. You need to, you know, convert your, your old subsistence model, convert your old, you know, uh, uh, antiquated systems of farming and adopt these new highly technological uh, input dependent methods of agriculture in order to pr produce uh, enough food to feed the world. Well, we know that this is a, this is a lie because we are already overproducing in terms of food globally. Per capita, we are producing more than, the, more than is, is required for every person to live. Uh, it's a matter of distribution, it's a matter of the poor quality of the food that we produce, etc., etc. So, yeah, but the lie is being spread that small scale, small scale farmers across the, the African continent uh, are not producing enough food. It's not true. This is a crucial moment in our history as Africans, and we really should be aware of it and be fighting for our food sovereignty and control and rights over our seeds. The battle is not lost yet, but if we were to lose this fight against these multinational corporations that are trying to take our seed, the result of that would be devastating in terms of our food access, our diversity in our fields, in our forests, in our communities. All of this would slowly disappear. We need to be fighting against these corporations that are trying to impose a system that we don't want. This industrial agricultural system does not serve us, it does not serve the earth, and it marginalizes the people who grow the food we eat. There is hope because we've been here for so long, we are still here. <laughs> you know, we have faced so many struggles as a people in this country, and we are still here. The so-called informer, the small, the forgotten, the plants that have been forgotten, the people that have been forgotten, for me, this is the, the stone that holds the whole thing together. They, they informalize our hope, the seed that we need to protect, the, the small-scale farmer, the old grandmother, the old grandfather who is not recognized, who is not celebrated by anybody, that's the person we need to go to because therein lies wisdom, knowledge, dignity, and our future depends on that.